Seca used to inform of movements of armies. Why is that important? Because the Philistines are right behind us. This is the triangle of borders between Dan, Judah, and the Philistines, which were behind us. We're gonna walk over there. As you walk, you see, see what these people are saying right now? These are all scriptures. This is all been, been made for kids, for Israeli kids. Uh, this is all 1 Samuel 17. That speaks the, the entire course of the battle. They're all scriptures. So the battle of David versus Goliath is probably one of the most well-documented battles, I think, in history, even more than anything I know. We can analyze a second by second what happened over there. The layer, this is the Mediterranean. So all of that, that's Philistine land. We're in Judah, that's Philistine. Show you exactly. Yes. The battle will explain second by second. Because Ty tried to explain it, we just weren't sure. This is by far my favorite place to end during the trip. My favorite place. I need a volunteer to read in English, 1 Samuel 17. Before we go, just to understand where we are, okay? West is Philistine. All this land over there that you see over there, you actually see that glow. You see the glow way back in the horizon? This is the Mediterranean. This is the city of Ashdod, right over there. Before Ashdod, between us and Ashdod, that's Gat, city of Gat. Philistine folks were a Polish state. They were not a nation. There were five Polish states, Gat, Ekron, Ashdod, Ashkelon, and Gaza. You see the forest? Behind the forest, that's Bethlehem. So Bethlehem is very close, very close. It's less than a day walk from here. The Philistines came after the Battle of Ibn Ezra and they destroyed Shiloh. They burned down the tabernacle, they took the Ark of the Covenant, and they killed Hophni and Pinias. You remember that? And they're impressed, they oppressed the Jews so much there was not even one metalsmith in the entire land of Judah. So the Jews had bronze and not metal, okay? When the Philistines gathered their army, they came to crush the rebellion of Saul. Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin. David is the tribe of, of Judah. Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, the capital of Benjamin was Shiloh. But it was destroyed by now, okay? So Saul is fighting all the time against the Philistines who are trying to oppress Again, the Jews. One of the main reasons, why, they didn't call Jews back then, they called Israelites or Hebrews. One of the main reasons why uh, uh, David is such an important king in the Bible, he's the one that after him, the Philistines, are a bunch of pussycats. You hear nothing about the Philistines anymore. This is David, all right? So, the armies of the Philistines gathered together to war against Israel for a final showdown to completely destroy the kingdom of Saul. So we're gonna read it verse by verse. We're gonna analyze this battle. And here is truly, truly the place where really the Bible come to life in so many dimensions. You see that? See with the two antennas, with the road, all of this? This is the Philistine camp. Try to imagine every tree is a Philistine soldier. Okay, so that's, this is the Philistine camp. Stretch all the way from here, all the way to Sukkot, which is right over there. They're clearly invaded into Judah. So the Israelite camp is between the satellite dish, the dishes and the forest hill right in front of us, okay? And you see the valley between them? There's a valley with the road. See that? This is the Valley of Elah. Okay, so Valley of Elah actually stretched from this horseshoe all the way into the satellite dishes. This is the Valley of Elah. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. So a war hero by the name Goliath from the city of Gath comes out of the camp of the Philistines to fight against David. Why Gath? Because Gath was in charge of this area. Gath is right behind us. He said, if you come out and meet and face me, if you win, we're going to be your slaves. But if I win, you're going to be our slaves or I'm going to leave you to the bird and the beast of the, of, the, of the field. So he leaves them with a bitter taste. That goes on 
for 40 days. Every day, the giant comes out and speaks to the Israelites. Actually, everybody see those two, uh, two antennas? All right, from the antenna, go to the left, you're gonna see a one huge tree standing in the middle of the valley. You see that? You see that? That's Goliath. <laughs> All right? So this is Goliath facing the Israelites, trash talking them for 40, 40 days. All the, all the uh, Philistines in the back are cheering and yelling and all the Israelites are shivering. And Jesse told David, take cheese and ephod and go down to your brothers which are fighting against uh, uh, with, with, the, with Saul. So David actually did that walk. That's not really, that's really not a far walk. Less than a day walk and you're here. Okay. And David came and he saw all the people of Israel are very, very much afraid. That, this is actually a comic, a comic moment on this battle. So imagine David, a little boy, boy, a youth, 16, 15 years old, coming down to, to give food to his brothers that are supposed to fight the battle. And what he sees, a Goliath, giant Goliath, yelling at the Israelites for 40 days, and everybody are terrifying. And he hears that the king says, whoever is going to win against this Goliath will marry my daughter Michal. She's a princess. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? With whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? So basically Saul said, Okay, I'm going to see this boy. And David comes and tells him, I have trust in God because God delivered me from the, from the hands of the bear and from the lion. He will deliver me again. And Saul is in great confusion right now. He doesn't know what to do. No one from his mighty men, Saul also had mighty men, no one from his mighty man is willing to go and fight against this Philistine. And this little boy comes and says, I'm going to fight against him. Tunic, he put a cooler armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. They would fasten on a sword over the tunic and tried walking around him because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. Cord, you raise cord. Cord, come here for a second. <laughs> We made our point. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so Saul gives uh, Major David. He gives him uh, his his sword and his and his armor and his brass helmet. And you can imagine David walking around with that thing, dragging the sword because it's too heavy. He doesn't know how to pick it up. The helmet is not <clears throat> sitting well on his head. And it falls down. It looks comic. It looks absolutely funny. And all the people of Israel are looking at it and said. Oh my God, this is the guy that's supposed to fight that Goliath. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword, and spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those who gathered here know that it's not by sight. Let's look again at the battleground. We have Goliath over there. See Goliath? Everybody see Goliath? He's yelling at David. Everybody see David? He's too small. You cannot see it from him. <laughs> right? We have all the Philistines on this side cheering and yelling and shouting and started to say, you're going to get this and you're going to get this and I'm going to take this loot and that loot. We have all the Israelites on the other, on the other side shaking and crying and then all of a sudden that tree is running toward the Israelite camp and we imagine this tree falls down. I can imagine if I were here, if I were flying the wall in that battle, sitting here, you would have hear a big <gasps> across this entire camp right over here. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine sword and drew it from the sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath and to the gates of Ekron. Their dead were strewn along the Shireen road to Gath and Ekron. So, the Philistine saw that, started running back to Gath and Ekron, which is right behind us. So they are running along this highway down there. This is the highway, right? The Israelites are in pursuit from over there to catch them. Everybody see right in front of me in the middle of the forest, there is an empty ground, looks like a small ruin something. You see that? Yeah. This is Sha'arim. This is the city of Sha'arim. And the road that leads to Sha'arim is that white road 
that you see where that bus is that connects to this highway. This is the road to Sharaim. So the Philistine, we can see exactly what happened. This entire army is running toward uh, northbound. The Israelites from the east are running westbound and killing all the Philistines all the way to the road to Sharaim. Why is it so important for us? First of all, this battle, you can analyze it a second by second. But this is the only place you can do it. If you're down in the valley below, you won't be able to see the whole thing. This is one of the most documented scriptures or documented battles we have in history. Why is it so important for us and why are we actually finishing our study tour in this point? Folks, what happened here, you remember I told you that, that you know we should always start in the beginning. This is the beginning. They're gonna come and say, what do you mean this is the beginning? David was crowned to be a king by Samuel, but the only witnesses for that crowning was Jesse, the brothers of David, the Almighty, and Samuel. No one else knew about it. In this place, David established the kingdom of David because the entire nation saw what David did. The entire nation understood that this will be the next king. And a thousand years later, we have Jesus coming from the same lineage of David from the house of Jesse, which is right behind us. David crowned, crowned by the nation right underneath us. This is the place that he actually became a king. And this is the beginning right here of the house of David. Some of y'all have learned your stories. Some of y'all know my story. I'm wondering though, how many of us have Goliaths in our lives? 